unformed penises are still surgically changed into girls. Surgeon Philip Ransley is treating one such infant. This child would have gone through childhood with an extremely tiny phallus and would have had a very small phallus in adult life. The psychological burden that he would have carried as a male would have been enormous. There was no difficulty in this case in uh, everyone agreeing that the appropriate sex of rearing was female and she was gender assigned female. This normalizing surgery, as it is called, has become such a standard practice that until recently most physicians considered it beyond debate. The surgeries are performed really because they are part of the still standing views that were established by John Money in the 1950s that the successful emotional and psychological development of these kids depended on their parents being comfortable with how they looked and that the kids themselves would be more comfortable if they also had so-called normalized genitalia. So most of these surgeries were done not because the abnormalities were life-threatening, but because it was viewed that they were required for normal psychological development. We have to perform our surgical task with what we believe to be the best interests of that child at heart. And that is what we do. And we would not undertake surgical intervention if we were not convinced completely that this was the correct course of action. Despite the best intentions of surgeons like Philip Ransley, a small percentage of these children do reject their gender assignments later in life. This has led a growing number of physicians to advocate that surgery be delayed until the children are old enough to decide for themselves. I would recommend to the parents that surgery has great risks um, uh, for children with intersex of being the wrong surgery and that the children may well uh, um, reject that surgery at a later time in life because they may choose the gender identity that was not assigned. Once designed to help the child lead a more normal life, these surgeries are also coming under fire for the physical problems they can cause. In my opinion, the treatment of intersexual infants has often done a lot of harm. I don't believe the harm was intended, but I believe that the harm is there. The genital surgery can cause permanent scarring and damage, which later affects sexual sensitivity. So a lot of the surgeries don't work very well, and they break down later in life. And so you have the stories of intersexuals uh, who've had surgery after surgery after surgery. There probably are cases where a child has been helped by surgery, but we don't know them. The fact is that the medical community has been enormously remiss in not doing long-term follow-up studies. And as long as those long-term follow-up studies aren't done, then their claim that there are happy customers rings kind of hollow. The scientific data that we would love to have to tell us whether the, the decisions we're making in infancy were correct or not, uh, this data does not exist. Um, therefore, in this field, medicine has to remain a mixture of science and art. Forty years ago, John Money helped establish a standard of care that still has influence today. But now that his most famous case has failed, there is a growing conviction that sex differences are much more inborn than was once believed. But what the balance is between nature and nurture is still being explored. In the 21st century, we can say that the theory of 
gender neutrality was wrong. That there are important biological factors that play a role. What the mixture is between environmental and biological factors uh, is going to take us a long time to sort out. I was never happy as Brenda. Never. And I'd slip my throat before I go back to that. I'd never go back to that. It didn't work because that's life. Because you're human. And you're not stupid. And eventually, you wind up being who you are. website, hear the story of one intersexual who rejected her female gender assignment at age 32 because so many people mistook her for a man at pbs.org or America Online Keyword PBS.